Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. Today's video is called The Five Stages of Backsliding and a Full Recovery. Apostle Paul says, I come to you in the fullness of the blessings of the gospel of Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So we praise the Lord. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. For he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. And he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Come on, sing. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. And I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Oh, he has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Praise the Lord, saints. Amen. <clears throat> no matter how you're feeling, get up and praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Hallelujah and praise the Lord. Give God thanks. Amen. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Woo! 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 Amen. Jesus loves you. He can be custodia bakata. Yoya bakatia ba. Stoi toi toi toi. God says there's nothing too hard for me. Hallelujah. Amen. For it's impossible to please God without faith. And it's with that attitude of faith, we're now going to talk about the five stages of backsliding. Now, most people won't even truly know that they've actually stepped on the first stage or the second stage of backsliding. And that's why the enemy, Satan, manages to capture people because they're not aware that they've actually begun to backslide. Amen. This is why um, Jesus chose the church of Ephesus first. Why? Because it is the church that looked like, okay, more than all the rest, they were the best. Uh, why? Um, Paul has spent much time there. The Apostle John, the Apostle Peter, Jesus' mother Mary even lived there with the Apostle John. So they had much encouragement. And you could even Jesus said to them, I know thy works, how you don't even faint. Wow. Can you imagine being in a church that never faints? It doesn't look like it's backslidden at all. But Jesus says, I have somewhat against thee, for you have left. You're backslidden from your first love. And that's why Jesus chose that church first. Uh, for the others, that evidently am <clears throat> backsliding. But this one looked like it didn't. And that's the first stage of backsliding. Most people don't even realize they have even begun. So we're going to go into these five stages. And why it's important? Because once you know the five stages by heart, <clears throat> then you'll recognize when you happen to be in stage two or stage three or stage four. And what it does, it gives you an encouragement of knowing how to get home. If you don't know where you are inside of backsliding, it's even worse because then you feel even more lost. But if you can actually pinpoint, yeah, say I get lost <clears throat> in New York and I find myself in the Bronx, but I need to be, you know, be around where the Statue of Liberty is, and I know where the Bronx is, and I therefore it's easier for me to know how to get back. Uh, and that's why it's important to know that each stage of the backstage, even if you don't backstage, remember, you are your brother's keeper, saith the Lord. You're there to keep your brother. So in learning these five stages, you can help people make their way back home. Praise be 
to God. So that's why this video today is really exciting and dear to me because it will really help people find their way back home. Praise be to God. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> the five stages. Remember the five wise virgins and the five foolish virgins. All of us have got both inside of us. Amen. You'll find some of you times we will tend to go down towards the five stages of backsliding, but we can be wise, amen, and begin to climb our way back, amen. Never think you're always wise because you're not. You've got both inside of you, and if you can own up to both foolish and wise inside of you, it helps um, break down the pride because pride is one of Satan's best tools for um, stopping you acknowledging where you are. Remember when Adam fell, God said, where are you? Amen. Oh, and Cain killed Abel. What is that you have done? God wants you to know where you are. And when you know where you are, you can begin to climb back up. Praise the Lord. So the first stage of backsliding, taken from Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 14 onwards. And it's the Jewish reading of the Kuksai, praise be to God. So the first stage, God begins in verse 14, says, when you stop listening, that's the first stage of the first stage of the five stages of backsliding. When you begin to stop listening, then God goes on to say that you don't want to perform, not just talk about, Perform all my commandments. What does that mean? Is that we have an inner desire. When you look at yourself today, are you burning with a desire? You want to do everything <clears throat> that Jesus tells you to do. The, um, David said this, One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, to, to uh, abide in His temple all the days of my life. Amen. Psalm 23 Thou anointest my head with oil, and my cup of the flows, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You want to be around God's presence and God's people every day of your life. Uh, amen. And if you can see that desire inside of you, then you're not on the first stage of backsliding. Uh, but uh, if some days you'd rather not be around God's people, not be in God's house, you just need a break, uh, and that desire is not there, then you're beginning to walk on the first stage of backsliding. When you lose that hunger to want to do everything that Jesus tells you to do, you're not praying first thing in the morning, reading your Bible consistently throughout the day. That's the sign that you desire to do everything that Jesus tells you. And if it's not... Like um, the Apostle Peter. Jesus says, rise, Peter, kill it. And he didn't. That was Peter <coughs> venturing onto the first stage of backsliding, which in Galatians chapter 2, the Apostle Paul had to come and rebuke Peter for being a hypocrite in front of everybody. <coughs> what that did is it rescued Peter to move back away from stage one. So look, even the Apostle Peter stepped on the first stage of backsliding when he was in charge of the church. Praise be to God. So, once you can recognize uh, um, uh, that you're beginning to not want to do everything Jesus says and have a zeal for wanting to obey God in everything uh, and you, you recognize that you're in the first stage of backsliding, here is some of the signs uh, it show you that you're now on the first stage of backsliding. It says that you will fear your enemy. You know that spirit of fear that comes on you? You're afraid of the next bill that it comes through. You're afraid that people will reject you at work. You're afraid, amen, that people in church might not treat you well. You're afraid amen, of losing your job. 
Lots of things that you can be afraid of. Like Job said, the things that I greatly fear has come upon me. That's a sign when you, I am having these fears beginning to when you have a rise up. When the letter comes through for the bill, you open it immediately because you want to know what the bill is. Instead of calmly putting it on the side, I'll open it tomorrow. Okay? Uh, you're not in a rush. When you're afraid, you're opening letters. Soon as they come through the door, amen, afraid of what the letter will say. That's a sign you stepped onto the first stage of uh, backsliding. Then you can feel in verses 14 to 17 that God is against you. When things go wrong, you feel God is against you. You feel people hate you. Amen. So you see the emotions, paranoia and fear and worry begin to infiltrate your mind. That's a sign that you're on the first stage of backsliding and you've lost the desire to listen to Jesus. If you stay close to Jesus and pray, amen, and seek his word, you'll hear him, amen, and not the spirit of fear. For God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of love and of power and of a sound mind. And then it ends, it says, that you will run when no one is pursuing you. Amen. You're afraid of things happening or you've got problems that are really not problems at all. It is fear that is making them problems. And that is the first stage of it backsliding. When I start feeling myself afraid of uh, the gas bill, afraid of uh, um, anything, um, maybe something's happened at school with the children, you get a phone call and you feel a bit of fear, hope everything's okay. I'm always checking fear inside of me and rebuking it because fear is the first sign of the ladder towards backsliding, which Peter did. He was afraid that he was seen eating with the Gentiles and he moved away from them in Galatians chapter 2. Praise be to God. So stage number 2 of backsliding, um, it says this, if you, after the first stage, you continue to behave casually, let me just see what the time is, casually with me, God said, I will punish you seven times for your sins. Now, if you don't learn from the first stage, things start decreasing very, very rapidly. And God now punishes you seven times for um, your sins. And what it says from verses uh, 18 to 20 of Leviticus 26, it said the heavens become heavy for you. And become, the heavens become like iron and the earth becomes like copper. What does that mean, heavy? It means that life now, you've got no strength. Life now gets to seem, your job is difficult. Relationship with your marriage is difficult. Relationship with your children is difficult. You're starting to find everything difficult. That's a sign that you've moved away from the first stage and into the second stage of backsliding. And you need to turn back and go back through the first stage. Recognize each stage. And then it says uh, that your fruit of your trees, uh, amen, no longer grow. What happens is, is that the love, the fruits of the spirit, the love, the joy and the peace, they're not growing. Every month you should feel a difference in the fruits of your spirit. This month I have got more patience than I had last month. This month I have more peace than I had last month. Every month I bear for more fruit. Once that stops, uh, then it's a sign you're on the second stage of backsliding. And you must quickly go back through the fear stage and start listening to the Lord Jesus. You need your fruits to grow. You, your relationship with your children, you need the fruits. Your relationship with your wife and your husband, you need the fruits. Your jobs, you need the fruits. Uh, and if things becoming heavy, it means uh, you're on the second stage and you need to start, go back. Uh, don't go backwards, go back up to number one. Praise be to God. But if you still behave casually, there's some people, even when things become heavy, they still are casual about it. Even when they've got fear, 
They're still casual and they still may be in church. Still come to church, although they're on the second stage of backsliding. And God says, Leviticus 26, verse 21, 22, here's the third stage. If you still are behaving casually after you've gone from the first stage and the second stage of backsliding, then I will punish you seven times all your <coughs> sins. It's getting even worse, <coughs> a lot worse, and very quickly. What is God saying? He said, I will turn the wild life to attack you and your children. What does that mean spiritually? The wild life means you start turning to live in the things of the world. You start wanting to go to the pubs and the clubs and the parties. You start living the wild life like the prodigal son. You and your children. Your children starts to live, amen, like the people of the world. And so do you. Because you have ignored the second stage of backsliding. Please, saints, when things start getting heavy, Jesus says, come unto me, all ye that are heavy laden, and I will not maybe give you rest. Hallelujah. And go back up to number one and then straight into the everlasting arms of Jesus. But if you're still behaving casually, then it says the wild life now becomes yours eh, and your children's. And then your roads become desolate. What does that mean? It means now you don't know where you're going in your marriage. You don't know where you're going anymore. The man you used to be, it's not the same. Your wife will say, you're not the same man I used to know. Or you look at your wife, she's not the same woman I used to know. And your children, you'll say, ah, you're not the same children, amen, that you used to be. Two years ago, your roads have become desolate. And that's when people usually leave the church altogether because now they absolutely don't know <clears throat> the left foot in front of their right foot. So now it's getting serious now because now you've left the church. And if you happen to have found yourself in that stage and you still behave casually because people, they go on to the wildlife, the children become worldly, living like the wild ways, amen, in the world. And um, <clears throat> though the roads are desolate, they still behave casually. And you've got the fourth stage of backsliding where God says, and I will punish you seven more times. Things are getting decreasingly Worse in a huge way. God says this. Verses 23 to 26. And Leviticus 26. It says uh, uh, that God will send pestilence uh, to you. What does that mean pestilence? It means that spiritually you become diseased. Before when you used to have. And the first stage of backsliding fear. Now your fear is turned from a <coughs> normal emotion. Amen. Unto one that is ill. People become so afraid that they need to take medication. Instead of having worry. Amen. Your worry now is becoming a pestilent worry. Where you need antidepressants. Your lust that you had a problem with. Now you cannot be faithful to one woman at all. <clears throat> or maybe you want men with men. Your lust begins to become a out of control it is a pestilence the spirit of pestilence attaches itself to your anger i have anger i have anger but god keeps the anger in control but now pestilence has been sent to it. the anger becomes out of control control and you're hurting your children <clears throat> emotionally and you're hurting your wife etc <clears throat> because you can't control your anger because it's pestilence on side of it, God will send pestilence to attach itself to all the emotions in your life that, that now you cannot control. Amen. You're no longer gentle. Your worry now is out of control. Hallelujah. And that's because pestilence is being sent to him. Then God says, uh, Amen, that your enemy will always win. You all, you'll start feeling nothing is going right for you. <clears throat> you're not prosperous. And it says you're never satisfied. In your marriage, you're not satisfied with your wife. 
Your husband, you're not satisfied with your husband. You're not satisfied at work. You're not satisfied in the church. You're not satisfied with your family. Family. You're not satisfied with the food that you're eating. Getting fat and fat and fat. That's a sign that you're touching the fourth stage of backsliding. And I have been through all of these stages. Oh my gosh. When I even talk about it, it brings a fear inside of me. that I yearn to start climbing the ladder. You see, when you start recognizing what stage you're experiencing and you know the seriousness of it, all you need to do is be like the wise virgin and start climbing back up again patiently. Praise be to God. Amen. Now my anger is controlled. My lust, hallelujah, is controlled. My emotions is controlled. Why? Because the pestilence has been taken from it, which is the fourth stage. Many people in the doctors today getting pills to control their anger. Amen. Pills to control their lust. Whatever it is, it's become sick. But instead of going to Jesus and having the pestilence removed from their emotions, they're taking medication for it, which only strengthens the pestilence. Praise be to God. So, <clears throat> the fifth stage and the final stage. God said, if you still behave casually when you've experienced the pestilence attached to your lust, now you can't be faithful. You've got three women now instead of just one wife. You're hurting your children. <clears throat> Your all your anger is always shouting at the children. You cannot control your anger. You get depressed. You've got no control over your emotions. Instead of coming to Jesus and begging him, Lord, take the pestilence off, you still would rather take the medication and behave casually with God. So therefore, the last stage of backsliding, God says, uh, therefore, I will punish you seven ways. Uh, see how God makes things get decreasingly seven times worse each time. Why? Because he wants you to learn not to backslide and to recognize the dangers of it. It says here in verses 27 to 33, you shall eat the flesh of your sons and daughters. What does that mean? Your children that you cared for, and that you loved, and that you spent time with when they were younger, now turn against you. Okay? They, they are, they'll begin to hate you, shout at you, amen, say things to you that are cruel. And inside of that, that is your eating their flesh. Remember the Bible said the works of the flesh is jealousy, envy, hatred. These emotions, the children, your own children, will start betraying towards you and that will be your food how sad is that really totally and utterly sad no honor there at all it's gone why because you behave casually and now you're on the fifth stage uh, of backsliding and then the last part it's god says uh, uh, praise god then the buildings that you built i will destroy what does that mean everything in life that you spend time building your relationships with your wife the relationship with your children relationships with people that you work relationships with people in the church relationships with friends on the street they all begin to be destroyed all the prayer and the strength that you had you no longer drink alcohol you don't smoke you were living good but now those buildings get destroyed and you're back smoking and drinking and cursing and womanizing. <clears throat> Amen. And everything in your life that you build now is destroyed. That's the time <clears throat> to turn back to God. Therefore, God says, if you do not respond in repentance, when you see all those good things in your life that you built is now destroyed. Then God says, uh, my spirit will reject you and therefore you have death. You see how important it is 
to recognize the stages of the backsliding because if you go down to stage five and after everything you built and destroyed and then you still don't care, then all that awaits you is death where God's spirit will reject you. That's the blasphemy of the Holy Spirit that you've ignored every stage whereby the Holy Spirit has tried desperately through judgment, remember, and John 16 said, the Holy Spirit shall come and shall teach your righteousness, sin, and judgment. And you ignore these five stages to the very end that you don't care. That everything you build up in life is now destroyed. Then sadly, all that awaits you is death. But isn't God compassionate? He waits until the very last step before his spirit will reject you and death comes in. Praise be to God. And I'm excited. You know, even when I'm sitting, talking about it, the joy of the Lord is by strength. I know now, whenever I trickle down and I can feel the fear in me, oh my goodness, be careful of it because it will lead me to the first step of backsliding. And then if I start feeling things are becoming heavy and everything I do, ah, I'm trickling down to the stake as they try and work my way up. I am alert. The Bible said the spirit is ready. It is alert. It is willing. It recognizes you and shows you each step that you're at if you begin to um, fall. Or if you go down to three, now the wildlife's against you. Now you're beginning to behave wildly like the people in the world. Time to repent and move your way back up. Amen. What a joy. <clears throat> but if you find yourself on the fourth and then you're emotions, your lust, amen, your fear is now a pestilence is attached to itself and all your emotions are becoming out of control. Wow, that's the time to start moving back. But even if you've reached the fifth stage and even your buildings are destroyed, your marriage is destroyed, your relationship with your children is destroyed, your health is destroyed, you can still turn back, be a wise virgin, and move back through the five stages. Slowly, Jesus will help you. His yoke is easy and his burden will be light. He will help you. All you need to do is call upon his name. Even at that stage, he'll take you up. And it says, those who are in Christ are a new creature. All things have passed away. And behold, all things are new. He can give you all things new again if you'll start working your way back through the five stages praise be to god now you see how serious these things are many people today are lost you know why my people perish because of lack of wisdom you do greatly err jesus says in not knowing the scripture remember paul said to the romans that the old testament is the root that supports you. Remember Jesus when he rose from the dead in Luke 24. He showed the, the two men on the road to Emmaus. From all the Old Testament. All the things that Jesus should suffer. And their hearts uh, were opened. Uh, and I pray too from the reading of this scripture. Leviticus chapter 26 verse 14 to the end. You will recognize the five stages of backsliding. And be able to keep yourself uh, Amen. Away from falling all the way down. But if you don't, you can get back up again. And if you never backslide, it is really helpful to recognizing what stage your brother is at and how to help him move through these five stages. Am I my brother's keeper? The answer is uh, yes. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And praise the Lord in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you bless everybody that has heard this message. You're like Mother Mary when you said that Mary hid these things in her heart. Amen. Praise God. And I pray that you will hide these things in your heart. As David said, Lord, I have hidden your word in my heart that I should not sin a Again, Steve, for thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Praise the living God.